Honorable Menir. Chairperson, we all remember the sense of renewal, revitalization and of progress following President Cyril Ramaphosa's first State of the Nation address. And we all remember the announcement of a new path of economic growth, of employment and of transformation in South Africa. However, in just six months, that sense of renewal, of revitalization and of progress along with the new path of economic growth, of employment and of transformation is dead in South Africa. The veneer of President Cyril Ramaphosa as the master negotiator who plays the long game and who has everything under control that is so popular in big business circles has been shattered as the economy slips into recession in South Africa. Big business who have been gazumped by land expropriation without compensation are experiencing buyer's remorse because they clearly did not get what they paid for. They paid for a Big Mac, but instead they got a Mac chicken who is too scared to decide because he is too scared to divide an increasingly fractured ANC, SACP, Kasatu alliance in South Africa. In the end, the fact is that President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa is a man without a plan to fix the economy in South Africa. Chairperson, we are in deep economic trouble with an economy in recession, collapsing business Honorable confidence. Honourable Menir, just take your seat for a while. Uh, Honourable... Rule 82. He knows that he must name members uh, appropriately. And uh, he has also uh, casted uh, aspersions on, on, the, on, the, on the president. Honorable, uh, okay. Uh, who did he not name correctly? Let me start with the first order. Oh, I, I didn't hear the, I heard him saying President Ramaphosa anyway. But anyway, let me check it and then I'll, I'll, I'll come back. Thanks. Continue. Continue, Honorable Menu. I'll Thank you, back. Chairperson. I'd be grateful if the Chief Whip would deploy the A team, not the D team in his whippery. As I was saying, Chairperson, we are in deep economic trouble with an economy in recession, collapsing business confidence and collapsing consumer confidence, a fiscal deficit, a debt mountain and spiralling debt service costs, a tanking currency, rising inflation and the prospect of an, uh, an in interest rate increase. Zombie state-owned enterprises gobbling up billions of rands in bailouts and sovereign credit rating agencies with fingers hovering above the junk status button. We have a staggering 9.6 million people who do not have jobs or have given up looking for jobs in South Africa. The Minister of Finance in Klanklanene of course bungled the reaction to the recession. The poor minister found himself fighting the recession on the sidelines of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, delivering three messages, which were first, he was surprised by the recession. Second, he was under too much pressure as, the result of, as a result of the recession and that he did, had no plan to fight the recession. This is extraordinary given the fact that immediately communicating the positives to the extent that they may exist and setting out a plan to fight the recession is crucial to maintaining Honourable the confidence Menis, of the investors, take... markets and ratings agencies. Thank you. Please take your seat for a while. Yes, Honourable Member. On the point of relevance, is it fair for Honourable Mayna to repeat the same speech three times in the same week? I don't know of any speech that the he same presented. Text. Honourable Member, that's not a point of order. Continue, Honourable Mayor. Thank you, Chairperson. It's clear that that member listens with her mouth and not her ears. <laughs> Chairperson, we know it would have been an act of desperation. But surely the Minister of Trade and Industry, Rob Davies, could have been cleaned up 
put in a dark suit and a red tie and rolled out on the talk shows to put some positive spin on the recession. But of course, in the end, it was left to the Minister of Communications, Nomvulu Mokanyane, who we can safely say is the most economically illiterate minister after calling for us to just pick up the rand to communicate on the recession. The fact is that President Cyril Ramaphosa, despite supposedly being a master negotiator, playing the long game with everything under control, has made a basic mistake and allowed populist reform to kill the recovery in South Africa. We do need a debate about land reform and we do need to write what was a terrible wrong. But triggering a debate on land expropriation without compensation now was a mistake because it's killing investor confidence and compromising any chance of recovery in South Africa. The tragedy, of course, is that the debate about land expropriation without compensation has nothing to do with righting a terrible wrong and everything with, to do with trying to co-opt fake revolutionaries who wear overalls on the outside and designer clothes on the inside in South Africa. In the end, the problem is President Cyril Ramaphosa. Speaker, House Chair. What's your point of order, Honourable Member? David, On which rule are you standing? Yeah, uh, David Mania is misleading Honor the House. There is no Honorable designer under clothing. Honourable Member, please don't. It's a T-shirt. Honourable no Member, he never talked about you. Rule. Continue, He's Honourable Menir. That's not a point of order. Continue, Honourable Menir. It's a member of the Gucci faction of the EFF, I see. In the end, uh, Chairperson, the problem is President Cyril Ramaphosa, who does not appear to have any authentic beliefs of his own on the economy, who, when faced with tough decisions, is inclined to negotiate, prevaricate and equivocate, who, when faced with implementing tough decisions, is inclined to call summits, conferences and dialogues, and who is more committed to fixing the politics and consolidating his own power than he is to fixing the economics in South Africa. We should never forget that he was hired by Deputy President David Mabuza and he can be fired by Deputy President David Mabuza who actually has a power base in the governing party in South Africa. The fact is President Cyril Ramaphosa is so weak that he is unable or unwilling to stand up to the left in his own party and worse, he has allowed himself to be co-opted by the fake revolutionaries in South Africa. That is why reckless policy proposals such as the formation of state-owned banks, land expropriation without compensation and the nationalization of the Reserve Bank are actually being considered in South Africa. Chairperson, we can and we must give hope to the 9.6 million people who do not have jobs or have given up looking for jobs in South Africa. With an economic growth rate of 0.7%, which is what is expected this year, it would take 103 years to double incomes in South Africa. With an economic growth rate of 5.4%, which is what the National Development Plan envisaged. It would take just 13 years to double incomes in South Africa. In the end, what we need now is a recovery plan focused on boosting economic growth and creating jobs in South Africa. In the end, Chairperson, we are often told that the problem is uncertainty, but the problem is certainty. The certainty that every year for many years under the governing party incomes have declined, which means that every year for many years the poor have been getting poorer in South Africa. That is why we need a new kind of leadership capable of bold, persistent experimentation. Thank you, to give Honorable hope to the Menir. Your time is now up. Thank you very much. Jobs thank you, Honorable Menir. I'm South going Africa. to switch off your mic. Thank you. Honorable the Minister of Finance.